Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. I have a trumpet in my shop that has a valve problem that is fairly rare, but it does happen. If you have this problem, you will not be able to fix it at home, but it is interesting to watch, and I think you will enjoy watching me fix it. I already cleaned the pistons and the casings, so cleaning is not the problem in this case. And the first valve works a little bit. It's a little sluggish, but it works. The other valves do not work at all. These two tubes should be parallel to each other. If I hold the trumpet like this, this tube should eclipse this one at the same time, but you can see that it does not do that. What that means is that this tube points down, or this one points up, or both. Look at the structure of the trumpet. If the tuning slide is removed, then you have three long slides, and they're all soldered together in a little group, and they stick out pretty far, and what's holding them all on is just the casing. The valve casing has to do a lot of structural work to hold these in place. What can happen sometimes is this can get bent. If this is held in place and then this is pushed down or stepped on or something, what can happen is it can bend either here or sometimes in the middle of the casings. There are two little braces that hold the casings together. There's also the tubing in between there, but that tubing is very soft and it's thin and does not provide a lot of strength. So the strength is mainly from those two braces and sometimes the whole casing can get twisted or bent. So what happens is when the casing gets twisted, those two braces can push on the inside of the casing and cause the casing to be out of round inside the casing underneath where these two braces are. This can also happen between the first and the second casings, but it's far less common. It's more common for it to be between the second and the third or between all of them. On this trumpet, the main problem is between the second and the third. There's a little problem between these ones too, but my guess is when I straighten this out, this might correct itself too. But it also might make it worse, and I may need to fix these ones also. The way to diagnose this problem is to hold the trumpet up to the light. So I'm going to look up to the light here and look inside the casings. The way to diagnose this is look for places inside the casing that are shiny and look like they've been worn down a little bit. Right there, you can see that the casing has been worn down in that area. And that just happens to be right underneath where the brace is. I'm going to turn the instrument around and I'm going to look for another corresponding one where the other brace is. So let's look inside there. You can see it a little bit right there. However, the camera angle makes it harder to see. This is a Yamaha trumpet, and the Yamaha trumpets have an inside the casing diameter of 664 thousandths of an inch. I'm not sure what that is in metric system. This is a ground casing mandrel, and it is 664 thousandths of an inch. A ground casing mandrel is made out of steel, and it is cylindrical, and it has a diameter of 664 thousandths of an inch, or at least this one does. I have several different sizes, but you need to use the one that will fit the trumpet you're working with. To do this job, you actually need two ground casing mandrels of the same size, and I have two 664 mandrels. This one I made when I was in college, and this one I got when I bought out another music store. On most of the sizes of ground casing mandrels, I just have one, but some of the more common sizes, I have two of those. So what I'm going to do is put the mandrel in there, and watch this. If I take this and bend it back, the ground casing mandrel falls into place. And that's because when I push this down, it relieves the pressure on the brace right there. I'm going to put the second ground casing mandrel in the second valve, and I'm going to push this. Let's see if that goes down. Yeah, this is probably bent a little more than the other one. I want to be careful not to go too far because I don't want to bend it back and damage it in the other direction. And one way I can tell if I'm going too far is look at that. Yeah, those are pretty parallel now. So there could be another problem too. Let's, oh, okay, it's, it is going in. It just was not falling in. What I'm doing now is bending the, bending the tubing around. Okay, I'm pushing down on it. And now the, the casing mandrel is dropping if I push it down. So I'm going to do that again. Okay, I'm going to put it back to the top. 
set it down and okay it is going down but when I push down on this tubing the mandrel is going down a little bit okay it's still not as good as it should be I'm going to put it through the other way okay it seems to go past the first brace with no problem it's the second one that is causing the, the issue okay there it's hmm. let's see I'm going to measure where it is hitting. Okay, yes, it's hitting right on that brace right there. So that is our problem. So what I'm working with, um, and I'm also going to put it in the first casing and see, okay, that seems to be good. The third seems to be good. And the second is the only one causing problems. And the problem is just one of the braces and not both of them because it goes in the bottom okay so it's just one brace pushing in and causing problems so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put the two ground casing mandrels into the instrument since these mandrels are steel which is harder than brass when I put these inside of there it's not going to mess up the inside of the casings any more than they already are so I'm going to put those both in there and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to get a screwdriver and carefully pry those apart a little bit. And what I'm doing there is I'm trying to take this brace and expand it. Let's see what I'm working with now. Okay, it seems to be about the same as it was before. So I'm going to do that again. And again, this is something you will not want to try at home because you can do serious damage if you don't know what you're doing on this. But it is interesting to watch though, so you're welcome to watch and learn and experience the joys of band instrument repair without even messing up an instrument yourself. Okay, now it seems to be going in better than it was. Still a little stiff. I'm going to try it the other way see if anything happened okay it seems like I need to go a little bit farther not much just a little bit farther when I do repairs on instruments I use a, a more of a flexing motion where you go back and forth. You don't just put all your power into it because you will break things if you do that. You go back and forth and use light pressure and then increase it a little bit as you flex it. This is a lot better than it was. I'm going to try it this way. And I'm just setting it in. I'm not pushing it in because it will go in if I push it. But I want it to just fall into place. Once it stops, I let go of it, and I'm going to see if gravity will pull it down. So I'll push it. I'm, I, oh, there we go. It went down. Try that again. Okay. So if I push it that way, it loosens it. Okay. Yeah, and that's just falling right through now. So. I'm going to try the other casings and see if anything happened to those. Okay, that one works fine still. That one still works fine. Now I'm going to test the pistons in the casings because when you're playing a trumpet, you really don't care if a ground casing manager goes up and down in the casings. You care that the piston goes up and down. So I'm going to put those in there. Okay, it needs to be cleaned a little bit more and oiled, but it does go up and down, at least the first one does. And now the third valve. Okay, it's better than it started, but it still needs to work a little better. Um, I'm going to clean these out a little more, and that might help too. Let's see, second valve. Okay, it goes in with no problem. Still a little bit stiffer than I would like. Still not like it should be, but a lot better than it was. It's also possible that the pistons may have been damaged. The casings could have squeezed the pistons and gotten them out of round or bent.
I have a piece of smooth polished metal. It's called a jeweler's anvil. And I'm going to hold that up to the light. And I'm going to look for light in between the piston and the jeweler's anvil. That one looks okay. Um, it's slightly off, but I don't know if that'd be enough to cause a problem or not. That's the third valve. Let's see what else we have. That one looks good. I'm going to clean up the valves and the casings a little bit more. So I'm going to remove the upper valve cap and the spring and the valve guide and put back the valve stem and the finger button. And I'm going to use that part of the valve to clean out inside of here. I'm going to take some valve oil and put a few drops of that on there. And this is the first valve, so I'm going to go in and out. I'm working the valve in and out, and I'm also pushing down. You can't see it, but I'm pushing sideways and up and down as I do this. And I'm also rotating it a little bit as I go. And what that does is it works the valve in the casing. And anything that might have been left from the first time I cleaned it, I am cleaning that out a little more. When I cleaned the valves the first time, I really could not work the valves well because I did not want to destroy them more. Moving a piston back and forth in a damaged casing can just cause more damage to the piston. So I did not want to do it this way before, but now that it's working a lot better, I can do that. So there's a little bit of dirt and stuff on there. I'm going to clean that up. Now I'm cleaning the oil and the junk off of the valve and also I need to clean out the inside of the casing. Now I'll see how the valve works. It seems to work fine. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other valves. All of the valves are working now, so the trumpet is fixed. When the braces between the casings are pushed in and it causes valve problems, if you just take two mandrels and put them in and then take a screwdriver and pry them apart like the way that this instrument was fixed, it probably will not work on your instrument and the reason why is because you need to figure out how the instrument is damaged and then after you figure out how it's damaged then you figure out how to fix it. Had those braces been damaged in a different way I would have fixed it a different way. I just did what needed to be done on this instrument to fix it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and also look in the description below for the link to the playlist on stuck valves.